Well, let's speak now to crime and policing commentator Danny Shaw. Good morning to you, Danny. Really good to see you this morning. I mean, the Times describes this as the latest twist in this tale. We were talking about wrongdoing, alleged wrongdoing by a BBC presenter. And now we're talking about whether wrongdoing actually took place. This victim saying nothing happened, nothing nothing was done that was wrong. What do, you, what do you say to this? It's all a bit of a mess, isn't it, Ellie? Um, uh, and I always thought that um, when this story emerged that there was more to it, that it wasn't as straightforward perhaps as the sun suggested and as people were thinking. Uh, I think the fact that payments allegedly of £35,000 were being made by this presenter to this person um, suggested that perhaps uh, there was more to it. Um, and so it would appear um, from looking at what has been released uh, in the past 24 hours, it seems as though that there is you know, clearly a relationship breakdown between uh, this young person who's now 20 uh, and their uh, mother and stepfather uh, and that they have very different accounts. Uh, the young person saying nothing illegal has gone on, nothing inappropriate has gone on. There's no story here. Um, and there may be reasons as to why that young person is is saying that. Um, and on the other hand, the, the, the parents are, you know, clearly saying that they believe uh, that this young person has, you know, to some extent been exploited um, or, you know, potentially has been a, a victim in all of this. Um, relationships are very complicated, um, particularly uh, when people are in their teenage years. And I think we have an example of this. But I think the critical factor or the really interesting factor in this is the fact that the um, stepfather uh, is apparently saying we went to the police and the police said there was nothing that they could do, no crime had been committed. Well, that clearly explains uh, yesterday's statement from the police saying that at the moment they haven't launched an investigation because they are not sure that criminal offence has been committed. And it may be that this is in that area uh, of you know, private life, messy, difficult, um, potentially very embarrassing, uh, may call into question this person's reputation, but not necessarily something that um, actually gets you over the sort of the, the criminal offence barrier, as it were. And legal representation is very expensive, Danny. And suddenly this young person has legal representation. One wonders how that is being paid for. We've already seen in the Philip Schofield uh, case uh, that he actually paid for uh, the person who was linked to him. He paid for their legal representation um, for a while. The whole thing just gets tawdry. Uh, it's very, very disturbing. It's, it's hard to know where it goes from here. And indeed, once named, if the presenter in question can ever have a career again. Yes, look, I, I, th I think you're right. It is tawdry. I mean, I think there are clearly questions you're right about. You know, if this if this young person is playing for this legal firm, which I have read is based in the St. James's area of London, so presumably quite an expensive legal firm, um, is is uh, are those legal fees being paid by the presenter? Question mark. Uh, that's certainly, uh, I, I suppose, a possibility. Um, I think the other thing that's interesting, Eamon, is this does raise some questions for the Sun newspaper. Um, the young person through their lawyer said, we told the Sun uh, that there was nothing in this. We denied the allegations on Friday, and yet the Sun went ahead with its story. The Sun's entitled to do that, but you would expect a responsible newspaper to at least print a denial. If yeah. that is the case that the son was told on Friday by this young person through their lawyer, this is rubbish, this is nonsense. You would expect the son to at least uh, put a paragraph or two uh, putting that denial uh, in their newspaper. So uh, I think the son has got some, some questions to answer as well about all this. But the person today who will have questions to answer and who will have to answer them is Tim Davey, the Director General. What a coincidence of timing uh, that this comes on the one day in the year that is set in the calendar, set in the diary, when he appears um, before the media uh, to launch the BBC's annual report. It's always quite a difficult time because mm. that list of presenters who are paid, my view, extortionate sums of money 
um, is released. Um, and um, that always raises some uncomfortable questions for Tim Davey. Well, he's going to have a lot about this affair. I would imagine if he's been advised by his press people, he will probably make some kind of statement or comment right at the beginning of that press briefing and try and get that subject out of the way and then deal with the, with the issues he wants to tackle in his annual report. And, and Danny, what would you say to people who would say... Look, this is between a BBC presenter and this young person. Why is this the responsibility of the BBC? As you say, on this day of all days where they present their annual report, why does it become their problem? Well, it becomes their problem. It is their problem at the moment, firstly, because the story is dominating the news and is in the headlines about someone who is a high profile person, a, a presenter, supposedly a household name, um, who is at the center of this. And it's something rather murky and unpleasant allegations that the, the law has been broken on one hand, um, claims that a lot of money has been paid to a young person's account on the other hand. So that's a problem. Um, if no law has been broken, then it becomes a question about whether um, what has gone on, I suppose, in his private life has somehow um, besmirched the reputation of the BBC, uh, whether um, some of it, you know, crosses over into the line um, of, uh, he, you know, whether his work has been affected and so on. And the BBC will have to look very closely at that. It may be at the end of all this. Um, the BBC takes the view that a period of time off air is sufficient um, and that person, uh, the, the presenter, can come back and, and sort of rebuild their career. I mean, my own view is this is very difficult to handle. I'm not denying that it, that it isn't. But I think the BBC and the presenter would be much better to come out, make a statement, a joint statement together, identify themselves for the sake of all the other people whose names have been dragged through the mud, who've had nothing to do with this. And because I think the BBC owes licence fee payers and viewers a bit of transparency. Because I think when you get to a position where you're a household name, you know, watched by millions of people, um, you have a slightly, you know, I think your, your, your entitlement to privacy is slightly different from the average person in the street. That's my view. Mm. Um, and, and so I do think that the BBC, you know, it can't go on sort of just denying, um, you know, yeah. uh, denying who this person but, but, is. But Danny, also especially, uh, really there's talk now that um, uh, parliamentary privilege may well be used to get this uh, name out there. And I'm looking at the front page of the Daily Mail today, and they say that one in six of us actually know who the uh, BBC presenter is and that's a mockery of the the laws and the privacy laws that uh, are out there at the moment. I just just wanted to point that out. That is making a headline today. Yeah, and and Danny, I did want to uh, to ask you because you were at the BBC for over thirty years, weren't you? I mean, what's your sense of how it's going down from the the inside of the corporation, and especially uh, for Tim Davy, because it does seem like he's been in crisis mode since the start of his tenure. Really, even in the last few months, you've had the Gary Lineker uh, drama, Richard Sharp, the chairman uh, who, who stepped down. There's been job cuts there. I mean, it's been a very very challenging time. I think every DG uh, has a crisis or two a year, uh, Ellie. I mean, that's my experience. Uh, there's always something that's in the news. Um, uh, I, I don't think Tim Davey really, I don't think the Richard Sharp affair was really anything to do with uh, Tim Davey, to be honest. That was sort of a little bit out of his control. That was more about, I think, the, the, the government in a sense. Certainly the Gary Linick affair uh, landed on his plate. Um, I, I think I, I think the mood uh, in the corporation, from what I hear, um, I don't think is great uh, because my experience is that when these matters affect people who are highly paid uh, presenters, um, high profile individuals, household names, uh, staff would like that person to be treated the way that everyone else is treated. Okay. And if there's any sense that that person was given special treatment when the complaints were raised back in May, and that a producer would be treated differently and would, let's say, be brought in and would be suspended immediately. If there's a sense of differ differential of treatment, staff will be absolutely furious about that. 
they want people to be treated exactly the same, whether they're a, a, a highly paid presenter or a young researcher uh, just starting out their career. And if there's any sense that that hasn't been the case, then staff are absolutely enraged about that. But I also think there'll be a lot of disappointment and upset that this is dragging the BBC into the headlines for the wrong reasons and allowing the people who want to knock the BBC um, the space to be able to do it um, and to, you know, to have a go at the corporation. OK, Danny. Danny, really appreciate your perspective and take on things.